Good morning, everyone. Today, our group will talk about challenging options for cattle dehorning. This is our group member, Titikon, Prut, Piraya, Sarantana, and Silidat. We are very grateful to our advisor, Dr. Chawalit, Dr. Balu, Dr. Sutsai Jai, Dr. Chitkapmon, and Dr. Sarawut for your advice and kindness. Our presentation outline includes some information about horn, general information about pets, the hunting procedure, and a discussion about welfare concern and alternative technology for the hunting procedure. So let's begin with information about horn anatomy and the hunting indication. As we previously know, cattle do not have horn at birth, but they can develop from a group of cell known as horn bud. During the first few weeks of life, the horn bud falls freely under the skin layer that show in picture on left side. But uh, it will attack to the skull of calf around two of two or three months of age, and the developing horn communicate with the frontal synapse that showed in the picture on right side. So the honing is a common procedure in cattle management practice. In cattle younger than two months of age, this button refer to remove of horn buds before they become attached to the skull. And it, is, it has advantage of preventing injury to other animal or human, making management easier and improving carcass quality. In the other hand, the honey is used for cattle older than two months with horn buds that have already attacked to the skull. It is used when the horn is injury, go up in the wrong direction, or we go after this budding. The horning can be divided into two types, resection or partial dehorning and amputation or complete dehorning. There are several methods of budding, including using a heat iron, a dehorning knife, or applying a cosmetic material to kill on producing cell. However, heated iron disbutting is preferred method because there is no risk of chemical irritation to the skin and it is method used in our first case. Like this budding, the honing can be done in variety of ways, but in the second case, we use a saw blade and embryo wine to remove horn. Moreover, time management is so important for the honing procedure to relieve pain, sleep, our recovery time and complication, and it should be done before the, the, the hunting procedure. Anesthetics or sedative such as salicin can be used to calm the animal and relax the muscle, followed by local anesthesia or corner note box with lidocaine to stop painful nerve impulse, and anesthesia instead such as funicimecumine to reduce pain and inflammatory response. This slide shows the location for corner nerve box with a bony rate between base of horn and corner of eye with 2% lidocaine, 2 to 5 ml per site. Next, let's move on to the general information of our dehorning cases. There are two cattle in our dehorning case. One is a calf and the other is a cow. In the first case, the signalman is a female calf named Wanwisa. Her bit is barman and she is around Five months old, body weight around 120 kg, body condition score 5 out of 9. The second case is a female cow named Ganya. She is a Japanese dark wagyu and is about 4 years old. 450 kg body weight, body condition score around 5 out of 9 too. Before the honing, we perform a physical examination. Both cattle are healthy, by alert, responsive, and ready for the honing. Now let's talk about the horning procedure that we perform in this case. First of all, we have to prepare the pain control medication. In this case, we use salicine in dose of 0.1 mg per kilogram IV as a sedative drug and lidocaine for control uh, corneal nerve block and analgesia and in the information we use funicin macumine in dose of 2 mg per kilogram IM. Let's start with cow one or one visa. Since this cow is around five months old and still have horn buds, so we decided to disbutting this cow by heated iron. For preparation before the procedure, we off feed and water for 12 to 24 hours. 
done physical examination and then rest in the cow. The operative drug that we use is salazine, funicimacumin, and tubacilidocaine in the dose and volume that are for all the previous slide. The slide show the drug administration and colon nerve block. After the onset of nerve block, we start the procedure by using heated iron that have been heated in bonfire. As you can see, there are two types of heated iron. The first one is like a linear iron that used for this putting and uh, pressure onto the horn butt to destroy the horn forming tissue or corium. And the second one is like a T-shaped iron. It's used for cosmetic purpose to make the disbudded cow pretty as in cow beauty standard. The left side picture show the wound after used linear iron and the right side show the wound after used T-shaped iron. After that, we use antiseptic spray and fly repellent powder to control infection. Doing the same procedure at the other side and then this case was used a tipamiso in dose of 0 0.01 milligram per kilogram IV as an antidote of salicine and then we are done. The second case of Ganya, since we, this cow is aged around four years old, the horn was developed, so we decided to dehorning by embryotomy wire and saw blade. So we prepare the cow like the first cow and then give P-overrated drug in those and volume that show earlier. Doing coronal nerve block. After the onset of nerve block, we start by embryotomy wire to saw near the base of the horn. But unfortunately, the wire was tear up while sawing, so we have to change the equipment into saw blade. And this is a resected horn. You can see that it exposed some of the frontal sinus and also the blood that bleed during the procedure. So we have to uh, use heated iron for control bleeding, trimming the corium around the base and also for cosmetic purpose too. Since we explored the frontal sinus, we have to pack the gauze with antiseptic paste inside the hole, followed by antiseptic spray to limit uh, infection. Use fire repellent powder and then bandage the wound. The bandage can be done after finishing all of the procedure by figure eight bandaging method too. Uh, we do the same procedure at the other side and bandage the exposed wound and then give a tipamiso and then we are done. For post-operative care, first of all, we have to separate the cow from the group to control contamination and contact between cow. Secondly, we can done wound dressing every two to three days by using normal saline solution, antiseptic spray or paste, and fly repellent powder. And the important one is pain management. We should have anti-inflammatory drug for three to five days after the procedure. Complications that may occur is like bleeding and sinusitis, especially in older cow, pain, pain from procedure, loss of body weight and production due to pain and stress after being restrained. Growth from the wiggle of the horn may occur if the current still left, and the last one, tetanus infection or what may occur too. Next part is discussion. There will be two main topics in this part. First one is about welfare concern, and the second topic is about alternative technology for dehorning in cattle. Let's start with the welfare concern. They are for indicators that they can use to observe off pain and this state of dehorning. Uh, physiological indicators, uh, behavioral indicator, diseases, and production. For physiological indicators, assessment of the catechromin response allows a variation of the acute response to pain posture, but this response is short life and relative only for, to the earliest phase of this state response. Asthma cholesterol concentration increased rapidly 30 to 60 minutes after the horning, decline slightly and consists for three to four hours, and then return to baseline value six to eight hours after posture. The comparison of cortisol concentration in the butt after the honing in one study shown that calves which disbudded by scope the honer had higher cortisol level than disbudded by hot paste or hot iron up to six hours post disbudding. 
This study also showed that uh, cholesterol level was significantly higher in caustic pairs reduced by the carbs than hot high hot iron reduced by that without uh, analytic uh, analytic carbs at one hour post this budding. Decreasing the depth to which the scope was applied during uh, the honing did not reduce the level of plasma cortisol in carbs. Behavior is one of indicators that can tell the pain and welfare of animal during or after the honing procedure. Avoidance behavior during uh, the honing such as tail wagging, head moving, tripping and riding are the signs of pain and discomfort. Head rubbing, head shaking, ear or tail flicking, lying, rising and reduced illumination are the most operative indications of pain. One study found that hot iron disrupting with or without anesthesia is an, an analysia, analysia led to a reduction in pain behavior of calves. After this budding with caustic paste, the calves has shown more movement between lying and rising than hot iron this budded calves. Scoop this budding is thought to be equally painful during the posture, but however, it is quick, so the animal doesn't have to struggle to get away from the pain. But at six hours after operation, the calves show more post-operative pain be behavior and call it pairs or hot iron use by the carbs. There are several diseases that had been reported at, uh, as affecting cattle after the honing, include tetanus, wars, and bovine leukosis virus. So before starting and after the operation, we have to make sure that the area is clean enough. For production, there is no significant difference in weight gain with intake and coded between the horned cattle and naturally horned calves after six weeks post-operation. As I say in earlier slide, every, every dehorning methods can cause pain and discomfort to cattle, so there are the steps to minimize pain from this budding and dehorning that can cause behavioral and six physiological change. You have to provide them sedation, fertilization, local anesthesia, and analgesia, which in our case, we have done this step two and it worked. Uh, for selecting and breeding of horned stock is and another way to eliminate animal pain from the horning. So, in this topic, I would say about how to do if the frontal sinus exposed after the horning. First of all, we can choose between wound management and surgical management. Wound management will be similar to what we have done in this case by using topical agents such as antiseptic paste or spray and then packing the hole by gauze with antiseptic. And the surgical management will do by dissect the skin around the base of horn and the suture the skin using suture material like supermit with horizontal metal suture pattern to close the cyanide entering. Nowadays, there is not a way to choose the cyanide entering. By using the material such as epoxy, silicone, and polyester resin with net, this material be, be used after wound management process are done with the main purpose to provide a barrier to help prevent contaminant entering to the frontal sinus. So, the material that we mentioned before that can lead to allergic reaction in some case, but the present day, the scientists invent the material that hypoallergenic and bioinert, such as calcium phosphate that you'd as bone substitute in human. Uh, the combination of materials such as uh, fiberglass, carbon fiber band, and resin are used as band-aid at the trucks in the elephant, including resin composite that used for dentists and healing the turtle shell. It's possible that one day in the future, uh, this alternative material will apply on the cattle case too. The important part, not only healing, but also preventing to export the frontal sinus the lead to alternative for the dehorning procedure. For example, using infrared thermography to identify the location of frontal sinus instead of percussion at the horn that may most accurate and it can decrease injury from coronal resection. In 2020, scientists from the University of California want to breed a deli car with our horn. So 
use advanced technology gene edit technology called transcription activator like effector nucleus or talent to take the DNA sequence that stop and gas cattle from growing horn and instead into the DNA of dairy cattle. After that, two hornless dairy bull were born so that in the future, invasive dehorning procedure will disappear and not necessarily anymore in the cattle management. And this is our reference, our reference and thank you for your attention.